All right, so we have another named tweet for you today. It's called, Feels Good. Feels good. We seem to choose the version of reality that's most comfortable for the brain to construct or lean on. Cognitive dissonance serving as a protective layer, maintaining sanity as we're exposed to multiple realities at once. Echo chambers are candy for our minds. So I've talked about this at length, that I believe echo chambers should be a vacation home and not a permanent home. They should be someplace where you go to rest and to attain comfort, to rest your brain from all the debating and all the, you know, having to exercise your cognitive dissonance muscles. I do have a video, Cognitive, cognitive Dissonance Workout Routine. Definitely check that out for more on that but you're exercising your cognitive dissonance muscles, finding new information, assimilating new information, challenging your confirmation bias. Um, this can be very cognitively taxing. So I say it's good to have an echo chamber someplace where people agree with you generally. You can still have debate. You can still have disagreement. You can have dialogue, but it's a little bit more friendly. It's not butting heads, socialism versus capitalism and things like that. Um, it's good to have, you know, to live more uh, in the world of dialogue and then retreat to a world where everybody is echoing your opinion. So we seem to choose the re reality. We seem to choose the version of reality that's most comfortable for the brain to construct or lean on. So it's really hard to always be in a state of, you know, I guess you could say cognitive flux where you have all these contradictions, you're, you know, you have to pick a path. You can't, when you're going through the A-B pathfinding, oftentimes it's fun to sit on the fence when it's a complex issue. Like if you think that you have a definitive answer, a definitive answer for a complex issue, uh, well, the chances are you're probably wrong. There's probably more complexity there. There's probably more options there and variance in what the correct solution could be. There may be multiple correct solutions that are have different varying degrees of success and different um, pros and cons, costs and benefits. But we do choose the most comfortable path, the path, the path of least resistance, very often. A very narrow path sometimes that helps us to at least, you know, accept what's going on. Like we, we're not constantly challenged. We have a path to walk along, a, a, a guide, we have a guide to go forward. Now, I'm not saying this is ideal, it's just the way that our brains work. We don't need to be in constant pain. We like to avoid cognitive stress. We like to avoid cognitive pain. And, I, you know, sometimes I actually use it as a marker, an indicator of when I do want to dig deeper. When I'm in a mood to seek information, and I do believe that all information more information is better, as much information as you can get. I am pro-information. That's why I believe we need an Internet Bill of Rights where people can exercise their free speech. They can exercise it and not fall prey to the modern religion of censorship. But we do need some place to lean. We need some place to rest. And the version of reality that's most comfortable is where we do that. Now, cognitive dissonance actually serves as a protective layer. We set up cognitive walls. Check out my video about cognitive walls. And I talk a little bit more about this concept of having these mental walls. You don't think about the cow while you're eating a hamburger. You don't think about the bloodshed. You don't think about all the uncomfortable and unsavory things that go into your reality to make it possible. You just think about the good what's happening, the comfortable reality of you just got a nice double cheeseburger, you're enjoying it, it's got pickles, lettuce, tomato, mayo, ketchup, whatever you might like, you're loving it. You're not thinking about the slaughterhouse, you're not thinking about the dark side of the reality that you enjoy. So cognitive dissonance, you know, bouncing these ideas off that seem contradictory or that seem to, you know, 
conflict with our confirmation bias and, and our understanding of the world, it is a protective layer because we need to have a place where we're, uh, we need to have a screen, we need to have a bit of a block to make sure that we maintain at least <laughs> the reality we have. You know, if you get overwhelmed with all the billions upon trillions of possibilities in the world, and I really, with our world of rational free will, you don't really have that many options, ultimately. Irrational free will, when we get into postmodernism and thinking as an irrational human being, yeah, the options really open up, but really there's only so much you can do when you're locked to this physical body. But this protective layer maintains sanity as we are exposed to multiple realities at once. We're exposed to other people's perception of reality that they communicate. May it be through media or just directly to you. They'll tell you about what they believe reality is. And if they're a bad person and their intentions are bad, if they're using bad intentions and they're trying to confuse you, they call it gaslighting. Gaslighting is when somebody is lying to you and their intent is to create a false reality, okay? Gaslighting isn't when somebody is just looking at things in a different window than you are, through a different window. Their, their window on the world is different from your window on the world. They see things differently. They have different preferences. They have different biases. They're not necessarily trying to hurt you or confuse you. They're just speaking something that seems counterintuitive to you. So we are exposed to multiple realities at all times. Different people have their own inner reality, and then there's the outer reality we all share. And echo chambers are candy for our minds. The dopamine and the serotonin don't stop. The cortisol's low, the dopamine's high. We are so happy when people are agreeing with us, like pacing is a big part of persuasion, right? You know, agreeing with people. And people are saying, well, you're right, and oh, you're so on point, and you're, that's incredible, that's insightful, that's informative, and that's good. And then you leave the echo chamber, you leave that comfortable space, that safe space, and you go out into the larger world and you see, well, oh my God, there are so many different perspectives here. There are so many different views, and which ones are right, and which ones are wrong, and which ones fall between, it, it can be overwhelming can be overwhelming. So we sometimes just go back into our chamber, we go back to our house, sit in our bed, and look at our computer and go, well, I feel good about this, I'm, I'm happy. And uh, echo chamber, hearing that you're correct, that all of your beliefs are right, is, well, it makes you feel good, it's a good way to start. Um, but in this world, we, um, we should be open-minded. We should have openness. In my mind, this is my persuasion, this is my philosophy, we should have openness to experience, as Jordan Peterson talks about. So, candy is tasty, but is it good for you? Great question. Leave me a comment below with your thoughts and observations on that.